Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again to our daily English news edition. I'm Daniel Cook, your host, Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. The experts for justice reform are still divided three ways on the day that they are supposed to finalize a consensual draft. The point of division continues to be the appointment of members to the justice institutions. The Democrats boycotted the meeting of the high-level experts today, which gathered at 10 o'clock without the experts from the Ministry of Justice. Still, the high-level and foreign experts say that they will finish the draft today with or without the opposition. The politicians have decided not to intervene, leaving the process in the hands of the experts. But the experts say that the parties must give their input on some issues. This is supposed to take place tomorrow at, uh, at tomorrow's meeting of the Ad Hoc Commission. While the boycott of the opposition is not a surprise, now the experts of the Ministry of Justice have presented a separate package as well. They propose that the majority and the opposition should collaborate on appointing the members of the institutions. They also propose that the members of the Constitutional Court be appointed by the President, who should consider candidates proposed by the parliamentary groups. Regarding the involvement of the Minister of Justice in the institutions, they think that the Minister should not be a member of the High Council of Justice or the High Council of Prosecutors. They propose instead that the Minister should be a member of the Council of Justice, which will be responsible for drafting state policies in the field of justice and overseeing disciplinary proceedings for judges and prosecutors. Furthermore, they think that the Council should publish an annual document on the state of the justice system in Albania every September. According to them, these proposals would simplify the changes to the Constitution to the furthest extent possible. With three different opinions, the reform is once again in a stalemate, and the internationals have returned to negotiations. The U.S. Ambassador met with the President today for about an hour, but the details of their meeting are unknown. After disagreements between the majority and the opposition today, the Democratic experts stood up and abandoned the Commission for Justice Reform. The main source of conflict was differing opinions on how many votes it would take to appoint a member of the justice bodies. After meeting with his experts today, the Democratic Chairman Lu Zimbasha announced that his parties will not allow the government to politically control the justice system. He, announced the Prime, uh, he accused the Prime Minister of trying to undo the compromise between the parties. We reached a consensus with the help of the international experts, he said, but a few days ago, Rama's experts withdrew from the compromise, insisting on a three-fifths majority, which is a number that they already have in their coalition. This clearly shows that Eddie Rama is trying to hamper the justice reform. Basha claimed that the goal of the opposition is to keep the reform away from political control. He called on the internationals to take action and to stop the majority's efforts to control the justice system saying that there was no possibility that his party would rejoin the meetings for justice reform. He announced that the opposition will do all they can to deny the prime minister's efforts to control it by organizing popular protests. Mr. Basha stressed once again that the reform must be in accordance with the Venice recommendations. A meeting was held today between the prosecutor general and a number of other ministers to address the shortcomings of the judiciary police the Interior, Justice, Environment, and Finance Ministers are apparently concerned that the police are not responding to criminal cases. They concluded that this body of law enforcement must improve. They believe that it needs more officers and better cooperation with the other investigation structures. Minister Tahiri had this to say, The legal proceedings against those who violate the law should be rapid, and the offenders should receive their punishment in a timely manner. Further proceedings... Uh, Further meetings will be held on these issues, especially on corruption and financial crime. Initially, we talked about better coordination between the agencies as a whole and the training of human resources to successfully lead criminal proceedings, he said. Meanwhile, the prosecutor general told the media that, he, uh, that more is expected from the judiciary police and that measures are being taken to improve their services. The Minister of Finance was concerned about the cost of adding more officers to the force. He asked the institutions to present a full argument on why they need to strengthen their human capacity. The meeting was also attended by the police, taxation, and customs directors. Several areas of the capital are experiencing problems with water supply. The citizens of Tirana are complaining that they are still having trouble with their water, even when they are paying all of their bills. The Ora News team has conducted a survey and learned that there are water supply problems in multiple areas of the city. 
and the residents are having to buy water from outside the house for their daily needs. The absence of water has paved the way for underground businesses who supply it illegally, and there is no, uh, there is no assurance that these services are safe. But while the citizens suffer the lack of water, the water supply company has recently dismissed 400 employees. They claim that they were not even notified of coming layoffs and that they were given no reason for their dismissal. They claim that they will be taking the case to the court. The government has decided that in order to better regulate the process of compensation for the floods, everyone who has or wants to have an agricultural business will have to register with the state. The Minister of Agriculture announced that they will soon pass a law to govern this process. According to him, this is the only way to deal with compensating the farmers for their damage in natural disasters such as these. He also announced that they will begin to compensate the damage for last year, which is estimated to be up to 6 million euro. We are evaluating the damage in order to proceed with the compensation, he said. Soon we will compensate for the damage of last year's floods. Six million euro will be given, four million to the farmers and the rest in the form of grants. I think that this is not the way to handle these situations. Anyone who wants to do business in agriculture must ensure his business from disaster. This will be regulated by law, said Minister Panariti. His statements were made today at the signing of an agreement with the EBRD which is offering 60 million euro to Albania's agricultural sector. <clears throat> Prime Minister Rama said today that the floods were caused by unauthorized construction and illegal harvesting of the forests. During a speech at the presentation of the 10-year forest uh, moratorium, Rama announced that the cutting of the forest will be punished by law. He expressed the conviction that forest moratorium will follow the same path as the other reforms that have been undertaken by his government. He said, the moratorium will stop the exploitation of the forest, which has been destroyed because of criminal activity that is being committed in complete cooperation with the structures that should be protecting it. We are determined to make two major interventions, a 10-year moratorium and a punitive package for environmental crimes. The moratorium will guarantee that the forest will be harvested only under the rigorous control of the Ministry of Environment, said Mr. Rama. He gave his assurance that the authorities will not tolerate illegal exploitation of the woods. The Minister of Environment spoke at the presentation as well, saying that the forests will soon be monitored by security cameras. He said that the actions to stop illegal harvesting in the past have not been successful, and that a moratorium is the only way to allow the forest lands to recover. The ban on lumber harvesting will be presented to Parliament at the beginning of the next season. The bill will allow chopping of trees only for personal use by the families of residential areas, and this law will be enforced by both the municipalities and the Ministry of Environment. That's the end of our edition for this evening. Thank you for watching, and please join us again at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Have a great night.